Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing good. In this video, we'll be discussing about the backflash functionality in the SAP production planning. So as you know that uh, the backflash indicator is basically uh, used uh, to perform the automatic gooch movement of the raw materials or the components into the production order upon confirming the operation uh, to which the components have been uh, allocated or assigned. So basically, uh, when you look at the general scenario, we perform the goods issue first uh, into the production order or the process order. And after the, con uh, the goods issue is done, so then we post the confirmation of the operation, right? So in this backflash uh, scenario, uh, the confirmation and the goods movement or the goods issue will happen uh, in the same time. So this scenario is basically uh, beneficial when the actual consumption or the actual requirement of the components are not known until the operation has been executed completely. So let's get into the details and see uh, in what configurations in master data can we actually activate this backflash indicator. Here on my screen, you can see the transaction codes on the left side and uh, let's start discussing about them. So the first one is basically the uh, OPK4 where we define the parameters for the order confirmation. So this is a part of the configuration that we can activate at the plant level. And then we have uh, the master data. So it starts with the work center with the transaction CO, uh, CR01 and CR02. So basically we use the CR01 to create the work center and CR02 to change the work center and CR03 to display the work center. I know that most of you are uh, familiar with these transaction codes. And then uh, after the work center, we have the material master where we can uh, enable the backflash for the component. And we also can enable this in the routing in case of a discrete manufacturing process. And then in the master recipe as well, uh, in case of a process manufacturing scenario. And also while the execution process, uh, the backflash can also be uh, dynamically updated or you know the user can manually uh, activate the checkbox uh, in the production orders and the process orders. So here are the places where we can actually activate the backflash indicator. So now let's uh, log on to SAP and look at these transactions. So let me start with uh, the configuration part, uh, which is with OPK4. So these are basically the uh, parameters for the order confirmation, which will be configured in the combination of the plant uh, and the production order type. So let me choose this example. And if I go down here under the Gooch movement, we will have a checkbox uh, to activate the Gooch movement to happen for all the components. So whatever components are actually assigned in the PP01 order type and in the plant uh, uh, 0001. So with these combinations, the components will be automatically goods issued. And next into the work center in CR02, let me choose the work center here. So here in the work center under the basic data tab, we have the uh, indicator for the backflash, right? And then into the material master, In MRP2 view of the material master, we have uh, the indicator to enable the backflash here. So the options, if we look at the backflash uh, indicator, so the, we have actually two values. One is to always backflash the component and the second one is basically that the work center is going to decide whether to do the backflash or not. So which means that if I choose the option two here, right? So it means that 
the work center to which this particular material has been assigned to in the routing, I mean to say the component allocation is done. So the work center, it basically controls whether this material ha has to be backfest or not. So if I go back to the work center here again, So I'm going to use the backflash indicator value as two, which means that the work center is going to decide. And now the system is going to see whether the work center allocated with that component has a backflash indicator here or not. If there is a backflash indicator activated, so, so then the uh, material will, will be part of the backflash uh, scenario. If not, it will not be you know, uh, part of the uh, backflashing scenario. Similarly, uh, we also can activate this backflash uh, in the routing. So if I go to the routing, so this is basically for the discrete manufacturing. And when we go into the component allocation screen, I can see that this particular component has been allocated. I mean, can be allocated to this operation. So if I look at the backflash functionality here uh, or the field, it's not yet enabled, right? Why? Because we have not actually assigned this component uh, to this particular operation. So now we first need to perform the assignment of the component to the operation by clicking on the new assignment and then enter the operation number. So once we enter the operation number, so then the backflash will be enabled. I mean to say the field will be enabled for uh, making the changes. So here we know that the component, this particular component has been assigned to the operation 10 enough. I'm going to decide whether to activate the backfish or not. So this is one other place where we can activate this one. Similarly, we have uh, it possible in the master recipe. So we go into the master recipe, again, the same place where we actually assign the components. So here are the components that have actually uh, been assigned to the uh, operation or the phase uh, 20 here. So this is actually a phase. And here we have the indicator to activate the backflash. So from here, you can see that the field has been disabled. But when you go into the details of this particular component by, by selecting and clicking on the details, so there we can have the uh, checkbox to enable the backflash indicator. And now uh, there might be few scenarios where uh, uh, the backflash should not be passed or uh, should not be part of the master data or uh, should not be part of the configuration, but the user can have the flexibility to enable that at the uh, execution part. So there even we have the flexibility to enter it in the production orders. So let me just create one production order here. So now if I go into the component overview of the production order here, I can see the, li the list of components those are actually part of the bill of material. And here we have the uh, field or the checkbox where we can actually uh, select which of these components have to be backflashed. So once I have uh, activated the backflash indicator and I have done the component assignment uh, to this particular operation, so while confirming the operation, automatically the goods will be consumed uh, into this particular production order. So the main usage of this is basically uh, where uh, the actual quantity of the component is not known until the operation has been executed. So let's say according to the uh, bill of material, I need uh, one piece of this particular component, but in the actual usage, I might need uh, two or three pieces or maybe I may not also uh, use this component, right? I mean, it depends on the uh, scenario anyway. So in, in, in order to post the actual consumption after the production has been completed, we basically use the concept of the backfish uh, functionality where the user can actually enter the uh, quantity that he has uh, really consumed 
while processing that particular operation. And similarly, we also have this uh, available in the process order. So in CO R2 under the materials tab. So we have the components under the uh, particular product. And the same way as we see uh, in the production order, we also have the uh, similar checkbox here uh, in the process order as well. So I would like to show you one thing here. Uh, in the production order, if I'm not going to enter the order type, and I've actually entered the material and the production plant, right? And I hit on enter. So now the system has actually picked or selected the order type as PP01, right? So how is this happening uh, uh, usually? I mean, I've not manually uh, uh, selected the uh, production order type and I've not uh, assigned any production scheduling profile uh, into this material master. So le let me show you the reason why it is happening. So first, let me go into the master data of this material. So if you look at the work scheduling view, uh, we do not have the production scheduling profile assigned yet. But we have the production supervisor assigned to this material master. So now if I go into the uh, details or the configuration of this production supervisor in uh, the configuration T code OPJ9, and then I choose the plant as 1000 and the production supervisor as 101. So here you can see that in the configuration we have actually assigned the production scheduling profile as 0001. So based on this configuration that we have under the production scheduling profile, the system is going to default the production order types based on the usage uh, of the material. If I go into the production scheduling profile, let me show you on a, a different screen. Production, shop floor control, master data, and then we have the production scheduling profile. And yeah, I go into the combination of the plant and the production scheduling profile. And in this configuration, if you go into the production scheduling profile down below with the combination of uh, the plant and the production scheduling profile, so we have actually defaulted the production order types uh, based on the scenario like make to stock should have PP01 and make to order can have a different production order type and so on. So based on this configuration, the link is going to be established between uh, the production scheduling profile and the material master and the production uh, plan. That's all for today guys, hope you have liked the video, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel and we'll meet again soon in our next video, until then take care, bye bye, stay safe.